Midwest Music Fest is back and bigger than ever. 60 performers in two days, September 16th and 17th. See S. Carey, Field Report, The People Brothers Band, Night Moves, Dead Horses, Dosh, Gold, and so many more. Find tickets and your new favorite band at MidwestMusicFest.org. Get outside in Pepin County. Pack up the family and visit the childhood home of Laura Ingalls Wilder. Sail on Lake Pepin, bike the Chippewa River State Trail, hike up Maiden Rock, and throw a line in a trout stream. Sign up to win a vacation at visitpepincounty.com. The Alpine Inn Fall Rock Fest is coming October 8th with no cover charge and a free shuttle to Bennett O'Reilly's, plus yard games and an outdoor bar. Enjoy a full day of music with Jen Wilder, Overplayed, and the Greedy Volunteers. Check out the Alpine Inn on Facebook for more information. We connected with Anne Drectra, director and 2022 honoree of the 11th Annual Patron Recognition Reception. We chat about early influences, connections to the pump house, behind the scenes stories of the theater, and what's coming up for this local talent. You can find more conversations, food reviews, live music, and events on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Ann Drechtrow. I was born and bred in West Salem, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and graduated from UWL in 1971, and um, sort of went away for intervening years, and then moved to LA in 1979 and began to work in film and theater. I became a director because I realized I was a really bad actor. <laughs> So I should stick to directing. And I really like working with actors. And seriously, I think at UWL, we were studying one of the Henry plays from Shakespeare and people started getting up and moving around in my mind. So that's when I decided I really should be a director. I continued directing in LA, usually one show a year at various venues ended up being a documentary filmmaker after all those years. But I sort of started out, my first job was with Chuck Barris. You may remember Chuck from The Gong Show. Okay. And The Dating Game and The Newlywed Game. Yes, I was a production assistant. And then I pretty much did every job that could be done, but ended up doing a lot of um, space documentaries, space, and had the great advantage of doing four shows with Carl Sagan, if you remember Carl Mm -hmm. Sagan, including various iterations of Cosmos and three other shows with Carl. Did uh, a History Channel series, did um, a few Novas, was casting director for a PBS show and for voiceover directing. Pretty much did every job that could be done there and loved it all. Always wanted to go to work. Sometimes my jobs were one day Sometimes they were longer than that, but I was a freelancer. And in 2003, I decided I didn't want to grow old in LA. And I moved back here into my parents' house. And I started as an adjunct teacher at Viterbo for 10 years, teaching fine arts, theater, and film classes started directing again here. I'd always come back to do shows at UWL or the community theater over the years. And I really like lacrosse. Tony asked me to do a show at the pump house called Don't Hug Me. And I did that. And I really, really enjoy working at the pump house because directors never get to pick what show they're going to do. You get hired to do a show and then you, you better love it. Hmm. Um, and it becomes your favorite show, whatever show you're directing, it should be your favorite show. So when was that? What year was that? Oh, dear. 2007, I think. Hmm. Through all those years, I would say to Tony, I would like to do this. And she'd go, oh, okay. (laughs) Perfect. That's perfect. (laughs) But she was extremely tolerant of the show's I decided to do along with other people. I did a few couple shows at the at UWL and I continued to direct now and again at the Lacrosse Community Theater. Did uh, along with Greg Parmeter, Macbeth to open up the new theater downtown. But I worked at the community theater since 1967 hmm. when 
I just started working there as whatever they wanted me to do. And um, still very good friends. That's the thing about theater and the film TV industry. You make a really, you meet really interesting people for a show in a short amount of time. And then you always are connected with them, which is what I love about both the theater and all the work I did. I'm still really good friends with a lot of people in LA with whom I worked. So what's kind of your process when bringing a show to life? Is it something that's pretty quick or is it something that you, you know about or is it tedious for you? It's never tedious. It's never tedious, but it depends. If you're doing play that already exists, like some of the ones I did at the Pump House, all of the ones I did at UWL and, and at the Community Theater, if you're handed a, handed a show to direct, the process is first you do the work of reading the show and figuring out what it's about. I like to say to actors who ask me questions, one of the questions I sometimes ask is, well, how do I tell this story? And I say to them, it's my job to tell the story. It's your job to tell the truth. I love working with actors. So you do your own homework. You do all the homework you wanna do. You look up stuff. You figure out where, how you're gonna stage it. Is it gonna be, if you're doing a show like a, a Shakespeare or Moliere, do you wanna put it in the year that it was written or do you wanna update it a little bit? If it's another show, you figure out the casting and, you, and then you have auditions. And then you go into here, usually about a six week rehearsal period of getting the blocking, which is moving people around stage and getting them to know their lines. And then you take them off book and then you have tech rehearsals to add in the lights and the sound and the music and the costumes and all of those things, which that usually, we usually start tech about a week before we open and then you open and my job is done. <laughs> and then I go and, um, you know, have a cocktail. But many times at the pump house and even in LA, in LA, I've been handed new works by playwrights and then you get to work with a playwright. Yay, I love working with playwrights. What's the story you're trying to tell? You get that from working with the playwright. And it may take a longer initial period to try and figure out with many rewrites on the, if, you, if you're working with a really good playwright who understands that plays will change if they trust you as a director to say, well, what about this? Do Maybe we wanna have the first act end here. What do you think about that? Or are you sure that this is, maybe this line doesn't work? And I've been really lucky to work with good playwrights, including David Crump. I don't know if you know David. Mm -hmm. he, David and I were commissioned by the Pump House to do an original show about the Wisconsin Vietnam vets their letters that they wrote home. And it took about three and a half years to do the research and the writing. It was called, it still is called uh, 5,000 Pounds, Seven Soldier Stories. And we were lucky enough to do it twice at the pump house. If you're doing something from scratch, from scratch, you need to have a cast there to help work with the you and the writer. That probably took, I was thinking three months working, mm. doing, working with a cast, trying different things and involving, and they were great. You probably know some of them, Brandon Harris was in it and Colin Thielen and mm -hmm. um, really great actors. That was amazing to work on that. I've done other original shows that are compilations. One called Backwards and in Heels, which was about women's issues. And it was music, poetry, uh, bits and pieces of plays, etc. We did one called in 2010 is when I started doing these sorts of things. We did one called American Voices, Words and Music for Change, which was protest songs from the Civil War to the present day. Mm. I also did an adaptation of a book called Last Letters from Stalingrad, the real letters from the German soldiers who knew they weren't gonna get out of the siege of Stalingrad. Mm. And we did an adaptation of that for I think seven actors and some musicians. So it, it just depends on what you're doing. Film is completely different. If you're a producer, you, I like to say that you're the quality control person. I've mostly done documentaries, working with other people in a, in a production company to put together a script. And generally you get hired to do a show. 
we were hired to do a series for the History Channel. My partner Mo and I had to develop the script and then you go out and you do the shooting uh, either on location or somewhere in within lacrosse, but you still have to do the location scouts and all of that. So it's sort of a, and you have a lot more people involved from the beginning. It's called Above the Line, which are technically the producers, the writer, the director, those people. And then below the line, oh, and the playwright goes above the line too. And below the line are all the wonderful tech people who make it all happen. And there are always a lot of them involved. People always wonder what producers do. Oh, look at all those producers. What are they doing? A lot. (laughs) You know, you have a long, varied career in all these different avenues, you know, related to directing film. Never was a director in LA. I realized really quickly, I didn't know where to put the camera, which is kind of important (laughs) if you're being, if you're doing um, directing. And people would always say, well, that's what you're director of photography is worth. I never felt like that was something I would be good at. So I stuck to producing later years at, in NLI. I really liked that because basically you get to do all the research and have fun. So with your relationship with, you know, the Pump House and their upcoming annual patron recognition reception, how does it feel to be honored for something like that locally? Well, I'm really grateful and terrified. <laughs> uh, two and a half years ago, which is when we were supposed to do this, I said to Tony, I will finally say yes to this, but only if we can make it about my friends in the theater and not about me Mm. and and have them come in and tell great stories about being in theater and what it meant. We all have great stories. If you work in the theater um, and Diane Faust will be back with the one time only choir. This will be the second time only choir. Choir mm. to sing some songs and Nikki Balsamo and Nikki and I had talked about one of our my favorite segments from the seven dance poetry shows that we've done. And so there'll be a recreation of one of those. We're going to invite people to come up and tell stories about being in theater. Not necessarily things that I've done, but amusing, lovely, heartwarming things that have happened to them working with other people or on stage. There's always you know, somebody, yes, this is my favorite one from LA. I was doing a show, I was doing an adaptation of Trojan Women in a small theater in North Hollywood. The theater was just letting out when the police came and said, and you have to shelter in place. There's an active gunman. This is way back when, I'm not that way back, but in the nineties, you cannot go outside. We're looking for him. So that was one of my, oh, that doesn't happen. Well, it happens too much. <laughs> now, you know, nobody goes, well. But back then, it was um, sort of um, an interesting thing. I was doing another show out in L.A., and it was during the Crips and the Bloods were fighting over turf. We happened to be right in the middle of it, and we came into the show, and they had broken into the theater and graffitied the set, which was an interesting thing. These are the sort of... Um, show must go on sort of things. Show must go on. I've also had people say to me, about a show, oh my God, that just changed my life. That was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. What we did do, starting in 2017, along with Diane Greaser and and Susan Fox, we did something called the Alternative Truth Project. We did for two years a political play reading free of cost to whoever wanted to show up. And (laughs) that, I think, meant a lot to people because they could come and listen to good theater. We had two rehearsals and nobody had to learn the lines. <laughs> and we'll be doing another one of those at the pump house in October. So speaking of that, what is coming up for you besides that event? What else is, do you have anything else planned in the next year, 18 months? Oh yeah. I'm still working on two on an episode for Santa Tione for the documentary called hometown heroes Four groups of people in lacrosse who before, during and after the pandemic, really made a difference. And Hmm. the four segments are the lacrosse distillery. We're one of the first to shift over from making spirits to making hand sanitizer. Then there's the enduring families, Denise, Christy Moths, who's been a friend of mine for many years, about the amazing stories of African-Americans who were in lacrosse from the late 1800s through the 1920s. And she did an, she and her cohorts did an amazing job of persevering during the pandemic and getting episode, getting more of their episodes done. There's the Grow People, G-R-O-W, who put up the 
gardens in schools and teach the kids how to work in the garden and use the produce in the school. And then last but not least is Jennifer Williams, my friend who's a, an artist and teaches at UWL. And she did what were called her pandemic portraits. She went around and painted small portraits of various people in lacrosse, both high end and everyday restaurants and friends who were going through things. And, and she's amazing. She's amazing. So I'm doing that one. Also working, uh, finishing up a dance episode called My Life in Eights about Nikki Balsamo and how she and other dancers that I'm friends with around the world persevered during the pandemic. Other than that, I'm not very busy. <laughs> so if people want to find out more, or connect with you, I mean, you're doing a lot at the pump house. They can head over to there. Is there any other sites that people can ch come check out to find out some of your work? On YouTube at IYMS Sanatione, S-A-N-A-T-I-O-N-E. And you will see, I think we have 19 short episodes up on um, that site. Other than that, just come to the Alternative Truth Show in uh, October. I am on Facebook. I don't do much on Facebook. You'll occasionally find me there sharing something um, cheery. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com. And you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.